what brings you money in today's world again philosophically at a very high end is solving somebody else's problem that he is willing to pay for it right the problem could be this guy is solving our problem or getting somewhere so we paying him for it yeah, i have seen many people like uh, they start as an engineer mm. but at one point they decided uh, okay i will later become an architect or go the technology route but many people cannot move up the chain where they want to do management or go take a path to become a cto ceo how do you think that people maybe get into see i have a very philosophical bent on this i mean we all work mainly because to earn livelihood i mean the world has has been built that way i mean imagine the prehistoric historic i mean man and all i mean there was no word livelihood but still people used to learn uh, people used to earn food you earn meaning uh, get food hunt food and all that i mean that's from that era we came to an era now where it is a set pattern that we all have to go outside earn our livelihood okay. that puts food on the table and then what is want we want food on the table and you want clothes on the what body and, and some other needs are there i mean right philosophically speaking mm-hmm. that's what it is right now what brings you livelihood what brings you money in today's world again philosophically at a very high end is solving somebody else's problem that he is willing to pay for it right the problem could be this guy is solving our problem of getting somewhere so we paying him for it let's say he's solving our problem of being on the internet and being on the social media and we are paying for it right isn't it and like that i mean the every job is like that a guy on the street is selling you vegetables like that right now i think if you look at i mean now that's difficult because when you are young you just come out of college job java python ai this that you're thinking more like that and now when you're a little mature like you meaning senior then you're thinking management this that but then you know you see i want to solve a problem a you solve a problem of what is that your your what is your, your stalin that he is having heart attack and you revive him you will become the deputy chief minister <laughs> in tamil nadu isn't it right i mean you I many obviously that for that you have to be at the right place at the right time and no right skill but at the end you see it is about problem solving what problem you solve for someone now let's say i am a businessman somebody comes to me now we were talking about hiring someone our mutual friend yeah. recently i am still thinking what problem can he solve has he gained any skills mm-hmm. now in his case he is at a disadvantage mm-hmm. because we already know him yeah so unless he convinces me that he has changed mm-hmm. and he has new skills that can help me solve a problem i have three problems mm-hmm. right he can solve any of these problems mm-hmm. he would be given an opportunity to earn a livelihood so that we can provide livelihood to many others right isn't it like why we started emsis that was also to solve a problem the mid size companies in our field didn't have a partner a product engineering partner we thought all big companies are serving big companies for them everybody is a number like crst right we thought i mean they are working with tech mahindra and but but for them 50 people team is nothing it's a small drop in the ocean for a company with 500000 employees but for us it's a big business right like that i mean that see at the end look at everything step back and look at everything in a bigger angle whether do you have skills to be ceo as an example now if you are solving a problem for humanity for outside consumers or for businesses in a independent your way i mean both kalpak and chirag were talking they were techies yeah but they saw obviously they 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 grew into that management role by themselves they took the risk they right in this you know twice mm. i first time they were do- and they were doing a lot of things themselves and also managing right so these kind of things you know and i think other quality i would say in them was that they were able to work with each other very well very hard to find that very very hard to find that you know two executives two senior guys in any company able to work with each other so seamlessly you know consistently so that's i think hopefully i answers your question at the end you earn livelihood by solving someone's problem that he is willing to pay for it right yeah that's the bottom line you invent something that somebody is going to pay for it you may think it's worth billion he may think it's 100 million that different yeah. that's uh, yes. of course and th- those are different skills thank you for that philosophical answer <laughs> because i think i when i often think i mean you know these people think should i go for this or that Should I go for? Should I become a doctor? Yeah. What are you good at? What do you want to do? <laughs> you know, 
I, I mean, you know, I often get asked these kind of career advice mm -hmm. questions. What do I do? Mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know. Yeah, because I have seen like uh, sometimes people get inspired by some other people, right? They want to follow that footsteps, right? I have seen many people come and right? yes, sometimes yes. when you, some people are good at facing customers, right? They always come and ask, how can I be, right? Can I join you, right? No, that's a very good point. In USC, I, I was, I mean, I never studied there in mm -hmm. US, as you know, but when my son was going through selection of colleges, so I did have opportunity of visiting many colleges, talking to many counselors and all. And I really was uh, amazed by their education system. What they suggest you do is not, oh, this is engineering is better, mm -hmm. doctor in medicine is better, or this is better, or that is better. You know, what you're good at. They give you admission also on the basis of that not on the basis of marks. Mm. How good you are with in whatever you good at. When if you are a basketball player, how good you are? Given the circumstances, did you make the best use of circumstances? Right? Now a poor person, uh, I remember the, there's one poor guy uh, who was homeless. Mm. In US, the homeless means they didn't have a home to live in. Mm. They used to live in a trailer or they used to live in a in a car. His father and their home was burned, something bad happened. Now that guy got admission in every single Ivy League. Even though he was not the topper in his class, even though he didn't have the best score. Because given the circumstances, he made the best use of those. He, he made the best use of the circumstances he was in. And he was better than most. I mean, adverse circumstances, he did amazing. That is not like, the top. Yeah, there are passionate people. Yeah, they give admission to those kind of people. Whatever you are doing, what are you, you are an artist. Are you good at that? Will you pursue your passion as a passion is the right way? You know, if you are good at now, they, typically the problem I find is that the Indian boys uh, who are good in math, mm. <laughs> there are 10,000 of those in, in US now, or Indian girls who are good at science, right? There are 10,000 of those. I mean, Indian American girls or boys, I mean, that's, and I think that's the, uh, when I sometimes some kids uh, do ask me or talk to me and I advise them, mm. do something I mean that you're really good at, not just math. Nah. <laughs> and just spelling, spell me probably. <laughs> oh my God. It's I mean, you cannot compete these days in US. I mean, every single child, Indian child, I mean, every, not every single, but I mean, there are like at least few thousand of kids who are very, very good at that. Oh, yeah. So the college giving admissions, I mean, they're going to give to the top 10, you know. And that's it, not to yeah. everybody. They don't want all spellers or spelling be champions sure. of their class. Right? That is correct. Naturally, once you follow your passion yeah, yeah. and find things that you're good at, then you can probably improvise on that. That makes you a better skilled person in executing that. Yes, yes. Recently, you know, Chitaji, I mean, you know, our master in heartfulness, he was sharing Swami Vivekananda's uh, Quote. Mm. And I, I, I had not read it, or I had read it, perhaps I've forgotten. Mm. Very, very good. That's, that's just really, that is summary of everything. Mm. Swami Vivekananda in those times said, I need men of passion. He didn't say, I need spiritual people. Mm. I need people who are good and leave their family, come to live with me. I need people who meditate. I need people who don't eat meat. He didn't say that. In fact, he used to eat meat, by the way. Yeah. A fish. Right? But I mean, those are all later. Mm. He says, I need men of passion. And men doesn't mean only men, men, yeah. men women, women, that's it, mm. right? And I, I mean, and I find observing Daji, mm. I find, I mean, you know, I mean, I stay around him a lot. Mm. What kind of people he connect with the most? Mm. Actually, people who are passionate in any field. And then somebody, after the person leaves, somebody will say, Oh, you know, he's this, he's a drunkard, he's this, he's how does he want to? Then I can mold him. <laughs> right? That he can be molded if he wants to mold himself, obviously. Yeah. But he just needs a direction.